Think about that. That's f- insane, Jim World. 1,600 members out of a 1,200 square foot training space. That's what you're telling me? Yeah. If you have a 90 second window to coach each person in class, our coaches, like Keith was saying, they're trained to make that 90 second window the most meaningful 90 seconds, as opposed to another method where you may get five or six minutes, but it's not as intentional. How much sex is happening between your members? This seems on um... our HR department is working overtime from all the uh, the member hookups that we have here. Probably, I guarantee that this gym has caused more divorces than marriages. Just <laughs> I, I think I think we caused more marriages right yeah. now. You're net I think positive we're right here, right? But you You're know, at, at any given month, it could be back and forth. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Gym World Worldwide. I am your host, John Franklin, coming off of a long weekend. I am relaxed. I am calm. I am confident. My skin's feeling very leathery, but it's okay because my heart is full because I spent most of it with my partner and co-host, the captain, Mateo Lopez, hanging out on white sand beaches um, and, and just feeding each other cherries and, and, and white claws, you know, just there were cherries point. actually. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah what yeah, beach yeah. were you at? We live in Jupiter. So we were cruising we went around the Island on the boat and then we pulled up in front of a billionaire's house and we just commandeered their beach. And so it was great. Like pirates, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, like pirates. Don't leave out uh, the bromosas that we had. Yeah. We, we had, had bromosas. bromosas. But, but it's not about us, Tao. It is it's about not. Keith Hardwick and Riley Phelps of core four. And they came on our radar because I made some comment about, uh, how difficult it was to have a large membership base and make a lot of money doing group classes with barbells. And they were like, Oh, hell no. Hold up. You, Hold we up. do it all they, the time. They say, we've been doing that thing on the regular. And I was like, okay, so let's talk about it. And here they are to talk about it. Tell us a little bit about Core 4 and what you guys got going on. Cool. Let's start. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead right here. Um, so our, our business is called Core 4 Elite Fitness. We're in Charleston, South Carolina. And what we've done is we've created a hybrid training method that essentially fuses the best of Orange Theory and Barry's Boot Camp and CrossFit into one. So if you can imagine our our training room floor, we're sitting in it right now, we have 14 assault runners, so manual treadmills. We have 14 Concept 2 rowers. And then in the middle of the room, kind of the centerpiece of the room, we have 14 stations on the rig or, rig, or strength rack, whatever you want to call it. Um, and inside of a group class, we'll have one coach who delivers uh, the workout to 42 people. And uh, we've uh, been in business for about three years. We have 1,021 members here today, right now, as of before this podcast. And Keith and I are getting ready to do our second location about uh, 12 miles across on the other side of town um, and repeat the process right here. Sorry, did you say one coach for 42 people? Yes, sir. One coach, 42 people. That oh, seems that seems like not enough coaches, just in my opinion. But how do how how does that work? How are you? How are you? you, how do you have eyes like on? That, you, you, when you have when you bring that kind of heat into the yeah. classroom, you command forty two people. I guess how do you how do you create that sense of like make sure everyone in the class feels like they're getting coached when you have like there's only so, if you spend one minute on each person, that's it. You're you're out. Class time's over basically. So uh, how do you how do you do that? How do you juggle that? Uh, I mean, there's a couple of different ways, right? Um, depending on, especially if, uh, you know, we've been open for almost what, two and a half years, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of these people, I would say at least half, right. Have been with us for a year, year and a half. Um, they know what to expect in a class, you know, we know what to expect from them. Um, but it really depends on if you have a, you know, a class full of people who have been with you for a year and a half, if you have, four different intros, uh, four new intros coming into class. Um, It depends on what the setup for the classroom is that day. But also, you know, as our coaches, we expect perfection. Um, We expect you to be hitting every person. You know, we don't say a minute, but we we call them personal touches, right? We expect our coaches to have multiple personal touches with every member in that class. Um, And then, our, our product is a product that we've created where, you know, our coaches can coach the barbell with 42 people in a class, but also have, you know, 28 people 
knocking out a Metcon on their own where the skill for the exercises aren't, you know, that, you know, it's not something you have to coach, you know, like a CrossFit class where you're, you know, coaching a barbell overhead snatch. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's our, it's our coaches. Um, our coaches are, uh, like I said, we expect perfection and they are high quality coaches and they have the eye to kind of control the room. You know, like you said, like take, take control of the room. They, they are the quarterback of the room and, uh, and it's, it just comes with experience. Uh, to be a coach here, you have to have at least uh, two years group experience. Um, you have to be able to, you know, correct people while you're coaching a treadmill block. You know, I'm correcting someone in a back squat while I'm still coaching the treadmills. Just, uh, it takes talent. It takes talent. But uh, And there's been a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of kind of back and forth. And Keith and I, you know, as we were, you know, Keith, Keith and I, we built the gym from essentially zero to 600 members with the help of just one other coach. And, and during that kind of process there, you know, we were already saying, all right, well, how can we create a product that's going to allow us to replicate ourselves as well as make this a scalable method, you know, similar to Orange Theories of the World, Barry's Boot Camps of the World, other products that, you know, they've done that. You know, most CrossFit gyms are just, you know, hey, they got one really good coach, maybe a supporting coach. So it's really hard to scale. So to kind of piggyback off of what Keith was saying, our primary program here, our flagship program, we call it Force Class. And inside of that class, you have three different blocks. You have a scored block in which you're trying to do the work as quickly as possible with good form and technique. It's kind of one of the things we take from CrossFit. Right. You, ha- you have a competitive people. You have a stamina block in which, you know, your goal is to perform intervals at a pace which you can, you know, last for the duration of that time. And then we have a strength block in the middle. So that strength block, your goal is to lift as heavy as you can you know, while taking rest, recovering. So if you have all those three blocks going on at one time, the timing block, right, that timing block, that stamina blocks allows the coach to use their voice, their uh, group management, their presence and attitude to be coaching that group. During those intervals, they also have windows of time where we where they can address any strength or uh, movement discrepancies with that middle group, you know, working with the barbells. And then that group working on their scored block, they're using their voice and they're projecting through the room to get people to find the level of intensity that they need in order to, you know, get that dose response for that particular workout right there. Um, really, the best way is to, uh, you know, you guys just – Drive those boats on up here from uh, from. We just have to come <laughs> try. We just have to see it, it to believe it. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, we've we've had uh, we've had other guys. You know, I know John. You did a couple. You've done a couple things with like Stuart. Stu. And uh, Stu was kind of the same way. You know, we you know we told him a little bit about what we were doing, and he was like, "Bullshit." And we were said, "Hey, man, come on down. Come check it out." Um, you know, here the next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anybody you know do that type of thing. But you know, we we both come from group fitness backgrounds. Um, CrossFit, Orange Theory, and then Keith was part of another fitness brand, you know, uh, here in Charleston. And we just really kind of dissected the workout, what worked, what didn't. And uh, the formula that we've developed here really allows people to, you know, get the variance, get the variety, but also the uh, the coaching um, that they deserve. Uh, and, and we believe, you know, if you do have a 90 second, like you were saying, Mateo, if you have a 90 second window to coach each person in class, um, our coaches, like Keith was saying, they're trained to make that 90 second window the most meaningful 90 seconds, as opposed to another method where you may get five or six minutes, but it's not as intentional. So that's the, that's the long and the short of it. But the best way to experience it is to uh, to get in a class. Yeah, come on down. Yeah. Oh, take your free trial, and if you sign up now, you get July for free. No, uh, that might we'll give you the rest promo. of May for free. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yes! I love a deal. Um, all right, so there's a couple things we need to we need to address here because um, you know Tao's coming in with that heat. Uh, but I think there are some important things you said that are missing. So, so first of all, you guys did a pod with Stu that I found out about, um, after we had this book, I went and listened to that before this one. It's great. So go check it out. It's uh what the fuck gym talk. Um, and they break out, uh, a little bit of the model stuff. And I think the important elements to know is like you guys were early on an orange theory, 
right? And yep. so you worked for an Orange Theory with 1,600 members, if I remember that correctly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and that's out of how much of a space? Like how uh, big how big was uh, that space? The whole studio was uh, lobby and all is three thousand. Was about twelve hundred square feet. So we had fifteen treads, fifteen rowers, fifteen weight room stations. So, so forty. Think about that. That's fucking insane, Jim World. So uh, sixteen hundred members out of a twelve hundred square foot training space. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. We ran class. We ran uh, slightly I bigger, think but yeah. 14, uh, 14 or fifteen classes a day. Five a.m. starting at five a.m. and we ran literally all the way through five a.m. six fifteen seven thirty eight forty five ten eleven fifteen twelve thirty. We did run a we did run a one thirty class for a little while, but we got rid of it. Then we started back at three. We went three four fifteen five thirty six forty five eight o'clock. Yeah. 8 p.m. Most most popular Which, class, literally 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Wow. We had an 8 p.m. for a while. It was awful. Um, <laughs> and people went to it, but it was just, man. People yeah, went for a while. Oh, and, yeah, then I mean, once, and then once you yeah, lost yeah, it. I'm not yeah. going to sleep till one. You're just hyped from coaching yeah. at 8 p.m. at night. Yeah, Actually, you're done uh, screaming. You're going home. It's like 10 a.m., 10 p.m. You're trying to eat dinner. You're still like yeah. all hyped from yeah. all the caffeine you at had. At that studio, I did run a 4 a.m. class for about four months. Oof. Wow. How much More caffeine eight. you guys have in a day? Uh, or, or cocaine? What, what you know, what do you guys <laughs> I I am I am He's caffeine free. I now. am two and a half weeks free from caffeine, man. I'm wow. I'm going all water. I'm sorry. Right yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't we I'm taking a break, right? I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to be holistic. And he's got two know? kids yeah. under two. Two kids, no caffeine, killing it. Oh I, I'm I'm in the same boat, I feel you. Well, no, mine's I, I got one over two now, but uh congratulations and just what a Appreciate horrible it. time to give up caffeine, man. What is yeah, wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, just, <laughs> just, you you gotta stop listening to David Goggins clips or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh all right. And, and so, you know, sixteen hundred members out of a three thousand square foot studio. Uh your studio, you know, it looks big, but it's it's also three thousand square feet, right? Like this yeah, is a so- so I, our, I don't know if you guys can see it because you're on the phone, but I'm playing clips. Yeah, on repeat yeah. Our, our overall, our overall footprint in here is we're we're a seven thousand square foot footprint, but our training room floor is actually thirty five hundred square foot. And then you know we do also have an auxiliary room where we run another program inside of you know under our roof, which is you know just under a thousand square foot. But our primary That's this red train- one here. Yeah, yeah, the red the one. Yeah. Fire. Okay. yeah, our primary so, training room yeah. floor is thirty five hundred square foot. What are all the programs? Because you got a lot of F words: fire, yeah. force, yeah. flex. So, then so, there's a hybrid of all of them. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So force. Uh, so force. We call that the perfect balance of strength and conditioning. That's where you're going to run, row, uh, weight train, bike, ski, everything. You're literally going to get you know the perfect balance of it all. That's force class. Then you have what's called flex class, which is um, undoubtedly just as popular, and that's all lifting. So no running, no rowing, no skiing, no biking, just barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell. Just normal splits, like if you were to a uh, gym bro, go to the gym by yourself. You know, um, upper body day, lower body day, full body day. Ladies love it. Guys love it. Um, it allows them to get on the barbell, you know, with movements that uh, have value but aren't extremely technical. Like, you know, say, for example, like an overhead squat. You would never see us do that in here. Um, then we have uh, our additional class in the red room back there. That one's called fire. That one is heated hit. So that's 90 degrees. Concept two bite or concept two bikers. <laughs> And fit benches inside of that room right there. That's an 800 square foot room where we do 24 heads inside of that room right there. 24 people inside of 800 square foot, 90 degrees. Um, that one is, again, it's, it's almost impossible to get into that class. And then, like Keith was saying, we have that hybrid class, which is essentially hybrid is a fusion of force class and flex class into one. And instead of 42 people in that class, we have a smaller cap size and we only have 28 people. So that extends the amount of time that you get with your strength training, extends the amount of time that you get with your interval training. Uh, and you'll see some things in there that are a little bit more um, geared towards fitness racing, like maybe a high rock style workout or a DECA style workout for the small group of people that we have that, uh, that are interested in that competitive fitness. Um, they really love that class as well. 
How much sex is happening between your members? This seems and what is the and 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 what does the fire room smell like? That's fire room know. smells like uh, smells, smells like, like your smells like, ass when you got off the boat. Smells yesterday. like burnt souls, <laughs> right? You know, from you know the carnage that happens in there. Um, and uh, you know, our HR department is working overtime from all the uh, the member hookups that we have here, probably. I'm, 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 just I'm assuming about you've the... caused some marriages, but I, I guarantee that this gym has caused more divorces than marriages. Just <laughs> I, I think I think we <laughs> caused more marriages right yeah. now. You're net I think positive we're right here, right? But you know, any given month it could be back and forth. But uh, I'm not gonna say anything. yeah. But but both, you know, I'm, I'm a married guy. Keith is engaged. Um, you know, but to a member. Yeah, people. We all it, have a past. It is a uh, it is a place to be. Um, you know, our membership, you know, does. Uh, you know, they do have a good time here. We we throw awesome parties, um, and that just goes goes back to you know what you were saying uh, prior to Mateo is like you know we have our on the floor coaching and making relationships you know on the floor during class. But so many of the relationships that we make happen when people come into the lobby and, you know, we're bullshitting in the lobby. They happen at our member socials. You know, we divide it into really two parts. We divide it into fitness and then we divide it into fun. And if we're doing the fun just as well as we're doing the fitness, that allows us to grow and that allows us to have a studio of a thousand members. A lot of studios, they just do the fun. And they miss out on the fitness and it doesn't work out. Or some studios, it's all about, hey, fitness, fitness, fitness. And they don't really take care of that fun component. And again, they're missing out um, because that's what people want. You know, w- with a membership, they're a member to a community or an exclusive, you know, part. Uh, it's not just about dumbbells, kettlebells, you know, sets, reps, whatever it is. It's the way that they feel when that's they the come in. The yeah, cake. you know. Like we're Keith and I, you know, our staff, I mean, they they hate us for the amount that we tell them, hey, who's that member? What kind of car do they drive? What are their kids names? How long have they been here? Um, Are they married? Are they single? What's their last name? What's their middle name? And we really just try to, you know, make it about that concierge, you know, experience. And, uh, you know, we find that that coupled with a workout program that can go head to head with any group training uh, program in this country or anywhere that that's that's what winning formula that is uh nutty because with a thousand members i'd imagine it's very hard to keep track of everybody so walk me through keith and i could do yeah. we did it till about 750 when you get to just the two of you then i was like yeah who the, yeah. Who the fuck yeah. is that person just when you get to 750 because you know then then you hire a manager an assistant manager, a head coach, three full-time coaches, and Keith and I step away, you know, from from coaching as much as we did. Um, but to about 750 members, you know, we really we could we knew every single person, every single name. I would say every class, every class now, there's there's maybe maybe two people we don't know, which is a good know? thing. And then you know, yeah, obviously we get to know them. First thing you do is you walk up to them, hey, what's your name? Oh my gosh, you know. Um, you know, nice to meet you, but, but yeah, I mean, it's tough. And that, and that's what we took from the, the orange theory, you know, the yeah. orange theory days, you know, the, the thing that we did and that most other coaches don't do is, you know, you pull up the class list, you look at the person's name, you memorize that class list. So that way, when they're running on the treadmill, you already know what their name is. You can shout them out, right? When they're, you know, going shallow on their squat depth, you know, and you need to give them a cue from across the room, you already know who it is, you know, so that way, you, you know, you can, you know, make that relationship. And just by knowing their name, um, you get a lot more leeway uh, as far as like that time goes back in the beginning. Oh, you only have 90 seconds. Well, they said my name. They looked at me. They made eye contact. You know, that that really, you know, that really helps you make um, that impression. We're to the point now, if, if we don't call someone's name or, you know, talk to someone, they'll be like, you didn't call me out today. Why don't you call me out today? Right. It's what they expect. And it, it's, that's, it's a, just a, that's culture. a that's yeah. a good thing. It's a culture yeah. that we have. Yeah. And these guys are all, when you say shot someone out, they're all mic'd up, right? For a 42 person class, you got to have that headset. Yeah, class is led over the microphone. Yes, sir. Yeah, here we go. Pull it up here. Is it their coaches? They, they literally have a Chad. Like the guy's name yeah. is Chad, and, and there's he's, no days like best, Chad. He's the days. best coach in Charleston. Chad he just won. Charleston. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's how they do 42. You get the best coach. You get the literal Chad that has a day named after him. That's right. <laughs> Chatterdays, baby. Chatterdays. You said you have a GM, mm-hmm. three full-time coaches. Mm-hmm. Who else? A full-time front desk? 
Yeah, so we we run uh, anywhere between five and ten front desk staff, depending upon you know time of year, summer, winter, whatever it is, you know, with schedules. Then we have a a full time manager, right? We just brought on an assistant manager, um, and then we have our head coach, and then underneath them you have uh two or three full-time or full focus coaches whatever wordage you want to put on there which means 15 to 20 classes you know per week and then uh one to two part-time coaches you know there and are they making do the coaches make like flat rate or do they get paid by the head uh head coach head coach is flat rate um head coach always be flat rate and then from there it's paid uh per head Mm -hmm. per head and that's something we you know we value too is we value our coaches and we're going to pay you more than orange theory we're going to pay you more than f45 we're going to pay you more than a crossfit and that's why we can get the best coaches and why did you guys decide to do this instead of um you know opening up a orange theory franchise or a hundred of them like jamie weeks you know the systems you know the world uh why did you decide to do this route and why did you guys decide to reintroduce back in the the barbell that seems like adding a level of complexity that, you know, other people will be well, shying away from. Yeah, that's and the, that's inefficiency. The why, they got a huge rig. inefficiency, right. Yeah. Like and, and, a huge and rig about, down the center of it. Talking about Stu Brower, who's all about, you know, efficiency, square footage, whatever. Yeah. You're adding, yeah, complexity and, and um, yeah, less efficiency. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll give you my kind of, you know, thought on things. And then Keith will kind of, you know, he, he we have a really similar, you know, thought process to this. But, you know. People would always come up to us and they would say, hey, what do you guys do for a workout? What do you do? We want to look like you. We want to train like you. We see the level of fitness that you guys have. What do you guys do? And we say, well, we do a couple days of Orange Theory, and then we do a couple days of strength training, and then we do a couple days of CrossFit. And then we thought to ourselves, well, well, why don't we just hit the white space in the middle of all three of those businesses and create a product that really allows people to maximize their hour and get the most out of, you know, whatever membership they be, they be paying. Um, you know, people, you know, I love CrossFit, but a lot of times you may go to a CrossFit gym and the coach is, you know, at the whiteboard for 10 to 15 minutes and your workout is only seven minutes and there's 20 minutes of practice in there. Right. And then you go to an Orange Theory workout. I love Orange Theory. But after about six months, you've been tapped out on what you could, you know, do with 35 pound dumbbells, a TRX and a water rower. So what we've done is we've created a brand and evolve your fitness brand that takes all of those basics that you build. And now we can extend the lifetime, you know, of your group training um, and the complexity that people say that the barbell has. We don't see it. Mm-hmm. We, we don't see the stigmatism or the stigma, excuse me, the stigma that people put on the barbell and say, you can't do barbell in group fitness. People can't do it. You, you can. It's just the way that you program the workout in order to give people, you know, the, the best experience. And, uh, you know, we made some mistakes just like anybody, you know, in the beginning to figure out, you know, what worked and what didn't. But to answer your question, you know, we wanted to create a brand and a workout and a business that we believed in 100%. The programs that we had trained at prior to, we believed in them, but then we found out that, you know, just for whatever reason, there were holes and we wanted to create a brand that had less holes and that could create a larger net and allow people to get more with with uh, what they wanted. Uh, and, and Keith will probably tell you, you, you hit it. You pretty much, pretty much same. I mean, you know, we, we sat, you know, at the bar, ate chicken fingers and, and, uh, you know, drank some beer and drew it up on, you know, a little sticky note. And, and, uh, we've had to rebuild the training room floor three times over to get the logistics right and to get, you know, the cost per square foot right. And how do you rotate the class this way? How close should the treadmills be? Should the rowers be like this? Should the turf be six feet or eight feet? And, you know, we had to rebuild it three times. Um, but we found that, you know, we found the formula now. And, uh, you know, to answer your question, Mateo, we just, we wanted, we wanted more for our members or the people that, you know, we were training and we thought that we could create something better, um, that was already out there. All right. It's just a, a progression in fitness, right? I'm, Someone like myself, I'm super competitive, right? I'm always trying to get stronger. I'm always trying to get faster. 
Um, and what I found from Orange Theory is, right, like I love the treadmill aspect because people get faster on the treadmill. They can run a faster 5K, run a faster 10K. But it's but fitness is just so much more than, especially as you get older, so much more than just getting faster on the treadmill and running at a 13 miles per hour all out instead of a 12, right? It's 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 getting really getting stronger, right? And that's what that's we, why that's why we put the barbell in there, right? Right. So many of these brands claim that they're doing X and Y and Z, and we know well. Are, are you, you know, how strong are you getting people? You know, how much bone density are you creating? You know, how much body composition are you eliciting change in if right. you're not adding that that tempo or that strength component in there? And it was just a non-negotiable for us. You know, we, we knew that we wanted to put the barbell in there. And uh, selfishly, because yeah. we don't we don't want to go anywhere else. Right. Yeah. We just want to work out at our own gym and grind with the members and we can fucking do that now. Yeah. So that was that was something I was curious about. You guys, you guys like each other. You guys yeah. get along. Yeah, because because it's kind of because uh, you guys opened this what right after COVID twenty twenty one early twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yep. No money. Couldn't get any yeah. money. <laughs> so you guys are. It's eleven thirty right now after a holiday weekend. You guys are both in the studio. It seems like you both were there pretty frequently all the way to um, that seven hundred and fifty member mark. Uh, how do you guys decide to partner and who does what? Because so many times we talk to people, there's usually who have these large gyms, there's typically like a front guy and then the guy behind the scenes. And it looks like you guys are both kind of the, the front man. It looks like you both are attacking and, and pushing, pushing the ball down the field. So how do you guys break up your work and, and how do you decide you guys were a good fit for each other? Well, we started, yeah, it was right after COVID. I actually got fired from my previous job. Um, I was running some studios in Charleston, got let go after COVID. And then, um, we used to, we actually, long story short, we went to college together. I played baseball at Coastal Carolina. He played soccer. We knew each other from there. And then I hired his wife at Orange Theory and then, uh, asked her, I said, I know your husband, you know, coaches, would he have any interest? He was getting out of his CrossFit gym, came, we worked together for like, I don't know, a month, a couple months, really. maybe yeah. Yeah, a couple months. And, uh, I left orange Siri, but then <clears throat> when we, how we got back together, I was in the process of creating my own brand. Um, and then I saw, he posted something on Facebook and was kind of, you know, hinting that he was getting back into fitness. I actually reached out and said, Hey, I have this idea. This is what I see, you know, where my vision is going. And he was like, that's fucking funny because this is exactly what I want. Um, yeah. So like you said earlier, we uh, we went to a bar, we had some beers and some chicken fingers and we, you know, wrote out what we wanted, uh, both our visions and um, and that's it. Yeah. And, and I don't I don't I don't think it would have worked out in, if, you know, if, if we didn't, you know, have that type of thing. You know, in the beginning, you know, we started out kind of like, you know, hey, Keith, you're going to be all coaches training um x y z and i'm going to take care of all front of the house you know general manager you know x you know whatever that person kind of takes care of there um and then you know as we've grown you know things have kind of crossed and blended and and, and you know our our roles are sometimes the same but sometimes very different but i think the one reason why our partnership works and, and and you see a lot of other partnerships fail is because you do have one person who may be front of the house and then you have that one person that's behind the scenes and they don't necessarily communicate with each other or talk about what they're doing. So one person, you know, starts to resent the other person and say, well, I'm the one who's always out here doing this. And then the other person is like, well, I'm the one who's always dealing with taxes and, and staff development and this and that and the other. And the one thing that I think that makes us different is we, you know, whatever, whatever I'm doing on say backside of paperwork, um, uh, employment agreement, whatever it is, you know, I'm letting Keith know, Hey, Keith, just want to let you know, here's what we're working on today. You know, we're getting X, Y, Z, you know, we've done the website, we've done this, we've done that. And he'll do the same thing. Hey, we're doing a deck of competition. You know, we got run club coming up. We got this event, we got whatever's going on. And just the ability for us to just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, knowing, you know, Hey, we're both working on 
essentially the same dream and vision, which is, you know, hey, we want we want multiple core fours in Charleston. We want, you know, a, one of these, you know, in every major city. And that allows us to kind of stay on the same page as opposed to just each person just being on their island and, uh, you know, working on their respective task. Um, that's kind of that's kind of how we see it. Yeah. People, I mean, they, all the time I'm always asked, like, how is it working with Riley? How, how is your partnership? And I, the first thing I always say is we've never I don't want to say we've ever we've never disagreed on something. But if we did disagree, it was like, I like that. What about this? Yeah, right. what yeah. If we went this route, we, and it's it's always been a, we've always you know come to the conclusion of what's what's best for the studio, what's right. best for the members, what's best for the staff, what's best for us. We've never, I've never been like you know fuck no, that's that's stupid. Like we're never doing that, right? Yeah. We've always, if someone has an idea as entrepreneurs, guess what? We're gonna try it, and if it fails, fuck it, we'll go to the next thing, right? But we've always. Any idea he's had, any idea that I've had, we've always we've always done it. We've always yeah. given it a go. Um, so that's that's one major piece that you know I respect from him, and yeah. I'm sure it's you know vice sure. versa. Yeah, and and whenever we fail at something, it's we, we're never like that was your idea that didn't work. Fuck you, dude. It's always like oh, we screwed up, man. You know we got to learn from that, and you know we'll figure it out the next time. But in a lot, you know, Keith and I are very, very sa the same. And then in a lot of ways, we're, we're absolutely, you know, polar opposites. But the one thing, you know, that, that was our vision, you know, for the brand and what we wanted to do here, you know, is unwavered. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I got, I got brown hair. Keith's got blonde hair. You know, I drive a, a black core four truck. Keith has a white core four truck, right? So people make so fun different. of us, you know, <laughs> yin and yang, you know, type of thing, you know, but it's literally just the communication factor and making sure that, you know, we are in the gym and we do know what our coaches are doing and, and we don't let the culture slip. And that's just allowed us to, you know, keep on moving and uh, progressing forward, you know, over the last two and a half, three years. Well, that's beautiful. Hey, gym owners, are you looking for a way to generate more leads, close more sales and increase client retention? Introducing Kilo. We are a software company that gives gym owners the tools they need to increase revenue and run a successful gym. With Kilo, you get a beautifully designed website to capture more leads, an integrated marketing automation platform to increase sales and our gym management software so you can add new client memberships, process payments and organize your class schedule. If you're ready to upgrade your gym management software, book a call at usekilo.com. And are you guys 50-50 or is someone a majority? No, 50, 50, we're 50-50, 50. no outside investors, no silent partners, you know, no, nothing like that. It's just, you know, Keith, Riley, um, and, uh, you know, we'll keep it that way for as long as we can. And then you said you didn't couldn't get any money for the first one. So how did you get, what were the startup costs for the first one? I know you said you had to redo it quite a few times to get the layout right. Yeah, because this is a nice ass looking gym. A lot of ergs, a lot of rigs. And then my follow up piece to that too is um, the lighting, I think. And, and that kind of thing, I think a lot of uh, the gyms we interview could learn from, you know, elevating the space, making it look cleaner, making it look cool. But um, I wouldn't know where to start. Who would I find to do my lighting? How much should I expect to invest in that kind of thing? So, yeah, if you could speak on that, it would be great. Yeah, Look at this um, lobby. Look at this lobby. Yeah, here. the I mean, lobby's he, nuts. You can start out and tell you about like our pre-sale, and then I can go into kind of telling you about, hey, what does a total investment look like for uh, building a core four? Yeah, so we started, um, again, you know, we tried to get money. We had this business plan. Um I went to a couple guys that I look up to and said, you know, where do I start? Like, where do we start? Right. So, um, we, uh, we, we came up with a business plan and we tried to get some money from the BDC, uh, um, yeah. And, and SBA, um, couldn't, couldn't get any money. They laughed at us, uh, you know, told them about our experience from orange theory and then the other gems and his CrossFit, um, you know, long story short, everyone told us no, like literally everyone told us no. We thought we were actually going to get funding from for SBA loan. And the day we were supposed to get funding, the guy called us and said, Hey, I just want to let you know, like, there's no deal here. Like we can't, we can't make a deal. Um, we also, I uh, came up with a, a 
projected P and L, you know, a two year projection. Um, we were trying to get some equipment. Mm-hmm. Uh, sent it to uh, rig equipment. Rig equipment. Yeah, sent it to rig equipment. She was like, you know, I love these numbers. We've never seen these numbers. You're not going to hit these numbers. If you ever do hit these numbers, please give us a call back. You know, we we want to work with you. And, and then we were, like, we were like, we we're like, all right, well, well, well what do we have to do? Like, what what do we need? And she, she was like, well, show us a presale. Yeah, show and us we're like, a presale. We're like, okay, well, we'll hit you up on Tuesday. Yeah. Right? So so we got on. Uh, we actually went to a CrossFit class. And then we took a photo outside of the CrossFit class, kind of announcing uh, our our brand, our our name, essentially. Yeah. Um, we had a pre-sale. First day of pre-sale, we signed up 100 members. What, how? Wait, how, how? You guys had a following already? You hair. had a list? Uh, look. The li- hair. Okay, well, that makes sense. <laughs> no. It just, uh, it just goes back to kind of, you know, we, we, we were in the area for, you know, we've been working in the area for 10 years. Relationships. And we built relationships, you know, over those 10 years. And we gave away uh, free advice. We gave away extra time. We gave away um, our weekends, our early mornings, our late nights. And we just poured into people for 10 years, not asking for anything in return, not one damn thing. Hey, yeah, I'll create this macro plan for you for free. I don't give a shit. Hey, yeah, we'll train you extra, you know, after class, no problem. Um, and it was finally, you know, after 10 years, you know, Keith and I were like, look, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to make an ask and, uh, you know, we'll see what people respond. And, you know, we went on there on that Saturday or Friday or whatever it was. And we made a video, made a video, launched a presale. You know, we did 150, you know, presale memberships over the weekend. And then we went back to Chelsea, you know, at rig equipment, you know, on Tuesday and we said, Hey, we did our presale. Here's, here's the money. It's, it should be in Zen planner tomorrow. And, um, and then she said, what? No way. How'd you do that? Yeah. How'd you do that? And then, you know, we've, uh, you know, we sent it over to her, but starting from there, you know, we, we, we were bare bones from the beginning, you know, each, you so know, did Chelsea hook you up. Did she do the deal? We did. The deal. Yeah, we did the deal. Okay. Chelsea, yeah, we did the let's go clay. Yeah. <laughs> Chelsea and clay, clay and yeah. I, clay and I are about to do another deal here for the next one. Um, let's go clay. But, um, we just, we, we strapped it together from the beginning. You know, we only, you know, we, we only needed as much equipment, you know, for, we first. started in the park. Yeah. So those pre sale members, we started in the park. Yep. Yeah. And then we, we, uh, then we had a pre sale studio where it was small, lo fi, you know, type of thing. Uh, 12 people per class, you know, we had station type of model. Yeah, there's our outdoor workouts. Yeah, there's it. Yeah, that's back at the old studio there. And then from there, you know, each month, each time we would hit a little bit of a milestone, you know, we would reinvest into the into equipment, into, you know, the studio, into the lighting, into the ambiance and whatever it is. Um, but all in all, you know, an all in investment, you know, as far as a studio goes, is you're probably looking at about two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars in the upfit cost. You know, walls, electrical, lighting, uh, bathrooms, you know, that type of thing. And then you're looking at approximately, you know, two hundred k, you know, in equipment costs, right? So for an all in investment, you know, of five hundred k. Um, you know, we're really competitive, you know, with an orange theory, um, way more competitive than like a Barry's boot camp, um, pricier than a CrossFit, but the upside on profit is the margins are way better than a CrossFit, you know, style box. Uh, but that's kind of it. Just bare bones from the beginning, you know, when we couldn't get funding, when we, when we didn't have the, you know, the, the financials that we needed to go to a bank or to go to an institution, um, and it, it was just two years of us just grinding, putting money away, being as responsible as we could, you know, with our finances. So when we did hit, you know, that next point, we could go to the lenders and say, Hey, you know, here's our debt to service ratio. Here's how much cash we have in the bank. You know, here's, you know, how much, you know, we're doing per month. Here's what our profit margin is. And, uh, and then from there, you know, we, we, we now we're, now we have, uh, you know, more maturity to show, not just, you know, Keith and Riley and our tattoos and, you know, our jokes. Tattoos get you far in life. It's still been a challenge to, to borrow money. Um, I mean, it's, we've, you know, what I realized is you got to have a lot of assets. You got to have a lot of liquid. You got to have money to, to borrow money or, you know, have assets that, you know, the bank can, can take from you if you, if you do fail and, and can't pay it back. So it's, it's been it's been a it's been a learning process, right? The whole financial aspect of of running a business and trying to borrow money and trying to grow is mm-hmm. uh, that's why you know 
I assume so many people do have investors and, and other people have a piece of the pie, right? Or a rich dad. Never forget a rich dad. It's rich dad important. or mom. Or mom. Or mom. Ooh. It is. Yeah, yeah. it's 2024. Wow. Yeah, yeah, progressive. Want- progressive yeah, thinkers man. over there. <laughs> yeah. Or mom. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't want us to run out. Of, John, why don't you ask? They mentioned it's much more uh, profit, better margins in the CrossFit gym. So, John, why don't you ask him? Yeah. How, how, yeah. Why don't you ask him about that? Yeah. What type of what type of margins are we looking at here? You know, how, how do you how do you cut up the pie before any reinvestment? Everyone works for free. Yeah, this is all, this is this all, all here. interns. <laughs> I don't know if we mentioned this, but everyone here is an intern. Great. And- <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, so no, it's a hundred percent profit. That's nice. That's good. We've never heard that before. That's good. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we'll invest. <laughs> you can, yeah, right. Just as far as like, you know, we try to keep our rent. You know, uh, you know, obviously we want to have it twenty percent, you know, or less of our gross income. But if you can keep it closer to fifteen, or if you can fly at, if you can fly at twelve percent, oh man, you know, then there's more, you know, on the meat on the bone for those for those owners. But um, we, we operate at, at around 33 to 34%, you know, profit margin. Um, uh, but we reinvest, you know, 10% of that every single month, you know, into, you know, our expansion and our growth, um, from there. Um, and then, you know, you rock at about 35%, you know, of gross, you know, goes back to payroll and all, and then all of that. And then just the remainder goes into, you know, operational, um, you know, OPEX, but, uh, you know, we could we could probably do a whole another podcast of like breaking things down of what we've done in order to make ourselves um, look, look, you know, look very well, you know, to some to somebody who would be interested, you know, in uh, purchasing a core four. Um, we really we really do think of it uh, as a math problem. And, you know, it has to work on paper in order for us to, you know, to be able to do it. Uh, because if it doesn't work, you know, a, as that equation, then it kind of just bleeds into the experience um, and, and and to how the uh, the messaging, you know, gets out live, you know, into everybody in the gym. But um, but yeah, we're we're 33, 34, 34, 35 percent, uh, you know, profit per month. So you're about to go from one studio to two studios. The second one is under construction, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. And we got a lot of talk about, you know, I I can just tell you guys are thinking of opening more licensing, franchising. Those are those are some of the the things I'm hearing underneath the surface here. Um, Here would be like my observation as someone who talks to a lot of these people. And I'll be curious to see how this turns out as we follow along on this story. So you two obviously have like the it factor. Like I would invest in you two because you got the energy, the vibe, you obviously work very hard and uh, you don't sound like dummies. Like, you know, your numbers and and you're, you're throwing around the words that, um, you know, a lender would want to hear. And so it sounds like you guys built this up. I would guess like, uh, you know, bottling lightning in the bottle. Like I, I couldn't hire two guys like you if I was to open up a space like this here. Like I, I just, wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, I couldn't pay them enough, right? So as you expand from one into two, how are you guys thinking about like who's going to be the figurehead? Are you guys both going over there? You one going to be over there, one going to be over the other. And when you expand out into three, four, five, how does that work when you lose uh, the Keith and Riley factor? Sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is something that we we've talked about a lot, and you know, we we really didn't think about you know that expansion or. Or, or doing that second studio until we had the players in place um, here to where, you know, Keith and I are coaching two classes per week, right? He coaches two, I coaches two. And we have the players in place that are growing the brand, not just operating the gym, but they're growing the gym for the last six months, right? So Fucking membership Chad. has, yeah, met Chad. Yeah, yeah you know, Chad, Chad is doing it. Membership has increased, uh, profits have increased. Um, everything has been on an upward swing that, uh, that allows us, that tells us that, okay, Hey, you know, these guys, you know, are steering the ship in the right direction. We do have bandwidth to play with, you know, in, in this way here. Um, but as far as things go over for Mount P, um, we'll, we'll be starting it again. The, the thing that we did, um, you know, as far as, you know, thinking ahead is, you know, we wanted to choose an area of town which we didn't necessarily have a huge following, but we do know people over there. But, you know, the psychographics and the demographics that we chose for our second location are similar, if not identical, 
to our first location. So knowing what we know from over here, the mistakes that we made over here, can we apply that just across the bridge over here and replicate the same, um, you know, if not better, uh, production? And uh, that's that's the conversation that we'll be able to have when we do be when we do get into a room, you know, with some type of, you know, maybe private equity, maybe, you know, franchise, you know, franchisee. And we say, hey, look, here's our second location. It stood on its own feet without Keith and Riley, you know, running everything. Here's our first location. Keith and Riley, we're not running anything over there. Take a look at, you know, at what this could produce for you. And so when, if this goes well, like second location, what are you forecasting? How long to break even? It should, it should be, you know, if everything, if everything goes right, you, you can break even between 18 and 24 months. And then what would be the plan for number three? Are you going to go, or is it like one every 24 months or is it, you know, if two works, you're going to go quick to five or what, what, how does that look? Or you're not there yet. We've had multiple conversations, you know, with people trying to figure out, you know, Hey, who do we need to talk to? Um, what are a couple of plays for us? We've had multiples, you know, come to us and say, Hey, we want to invest in core four. Um, we want to be the money, you know, the money guy or, but we don't want to run any day to day. Um, and we're just trying to figure out what is the best way for us to, um, you know, number one, put our members first, uh, number two, create positions for our current staff, people that have been with us since day one, how can we elevate them in their careers? And, uh, and just take it in that direction there. So the we we can't really answer that. I don't know. Yeah. From yeah. a from a from a product standpoint, right, to actually test our product and test the water somewhere where no one knows who the fuck Riley or Keith are, right? Um, maybe a Charlotte. We, yeah, you know. we've 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 looked at Savannah, you know, somewhere that's not too far for us to travel, but also again in a market where um, you know, Orange Theory is successful, F45 is successful, um, you know, a, a massive CrossFit gym. Um, but, uh, but our next, our next, you know, test, I don't, I don't think Mount Pleasant is going to be an issue, uh, because again, we're going to hire people who can replace Riley and Keith. And that's just what we do, right? We're super, super picky, super, super slow to hire, quick to fire. If you don't, if you don't, you know, I don't want to say your morals and values have to match ours exactly, but it's an energy thing. Like if you, if you can't roll with us, if you can't, if you're not looking to grow with core four, right, it might not be the best fit, but getting core four to, to a place to where no one knows who we are. We find an amazing staff and core four, you know, is 600, 700, 800 members at a location that's outside of Charleston and now we're fucking onto something, guys. Right? We're onto something, and from there, right? It's I don't think there's any like I don't want to say slowing us down, right? We want to do this, you know, in a smart, educated, right? Like, not you know, try to put ten pounds of sugar in a five pound bag, right? So to speak. Like, let's do this in a in a very strategic way, and and grow this thing, and and make a you know, make some waves in the fitness industry with core four. Right. So I think our, we gotta, we gotta test, we gotta get outside of Charleston. We gotta, we gotta test another market, um, where, where we're not known and find those people that can help us do that, which is the hard part. We talked about the, the four services, uh, or the four offerings, but how do you actually package and sell this thing? Just basically, you know, we do, we do eight times per month, which is 129. We do 12 times per month, which is 149. And then we do an unlimited membership, which is 189. Um, some people are on slightly, you know, less than that because they're grandfathered in, you know, to uh, earlier membership rates. Uh, but we bill on a 28 day billing cycle, uh, month to month, 30 day, Huge. 30 day cancellation notice. Um, and that's essentially, you know, how, uh, how we run. Um, everything there. We're getting yelled at by our members. Yeah. <laughs> and then do they, um, it, it doesn't matter which, which class they go to, or is, do you have it segmented? Like you're a fire membership only or a forest membership. No, no. no. And that's the beauty. 
you know, having, you know, those four programs under one roof, right, you know, so they can get a little bit of variety and extend their, you know, length of membership. Whereas, you know, if they go to an Orange Theory, they know that class is going to be base push all out with a little bit of TRX every day if they come here and they're like, hey, I don't really want to run today, um, but I do want to lift. They can come to a flex class, right? We or, want you taking everything. Yeah, you we know, or you. if they're like, hey, you know what, like, I don't want to lift heavy today, but I damn, dude, I, I need to sweat out whatever I did, you know, over Memorial Day weekend. They can come to a fire class and, you know, get in that heated room. Um, and, and that's really, you know, one of the perks of membership here is that you do have four programs under one roof in one membership cost. From my experience of, of I worked at a studio where we had hit training, but also yoga and a bar type class, you, you separate your staff members too, right? It's like, Oh, why am I not getting paid more? Because I have 42 people in a class, but yet, you know, our fire room can only take 24 people. Why, why am I getting, you know, knocked? Because I can only have 24 people. So that's why all of our coaches, if you're going to coach here, you have to be able to coach all four classes. If you're a member, we want you to be a part of all four different programs. Mm -hmm. Well, gents, I know we are coming to the end of time here. Class is firing up for you guys in three minutes. Uh, it is a firing. Parent. You up. guys have firing, firing. firing. Yeah, it looks like you guys got lightning in a bottle. You got something uh, really awesome going on. And this is going to be eye opening for a lot of people who run group training classes, especially ones with barbells in there. So we appreciate you opening up the kimono and sharing. We'll be interested in having you guys back on once you got that second location firing, seeing how you guys do. Wait, Keith and Riley, where do people find you? Yes, where did they find you? They can find they can find us really at, at Core Four, you know, at Core Four Elite Instagram, Core Four Elite Fitness, Core Four Elite dot com. Um, you know, we're we're really an open book. You know, if, if anybody has any questions about, you know, hey, there's no way you guys are doing that, or I want to see it in person, give us a shout. We'll, we'll bring you in. We'll, we'll we'll give you a free class. We'll we'll take you out. You know, for a steak. Um, you I'll drink know, some beers. we'll drink some beer, we'll, we'll chop it up. Um, you know, we're industry guys, you know, we, we know what it's like, you know, for coaches who wake up early in the morning and then, you know, they, they got to coach late at night or they got to clope in the next day. Um, so we really, you know, we, we know what it's like, we've been there and, you know, we're just trying to create something, you know, not only for our coaches to have a career, but for our members to get the most out of their fitness. And, uh, if you guys get down with that, you know, then you would definitely, you know, get down with core four and, uh, listeners. We appreciate you listening all the way to the end. You know, it is very hard to find people who are doing over a thousand members in group training with a barbell out of 3,500 square feet. So if you appreciate this, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment so we can keep making this and more people like Keith and Riley want to come on and share their information with you so you can learn for zero dollars. Wishing you continued success. Until appreciate next week, guys, Jim man. World. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.